hello and welcome back in this part we are going to take some time to fix a silly mistake i made in part 7 as you can see when looking at the inlet of our spray casing from the top the outlet should be on the left but currently we have it on the right side it is kind of disappointing for me although I am almost happy it happens because it will provide us a great opportunity to demonstrate how easy it is to fix this kind of mistake and it will be also a good opportunity to evaluate how robust is our assembly once we will have this fixed we are going to keep adding more components and we will add this flange so the first chunk will be this tiny piece and then we will have this second one as these two on the inlet are same parts as what we have on the outlet it won't be necessary to model these two parts we are going to reuse the same components okay i will switch to the parts configuration and now we can start moving these components to the proper location and i am going to show this sketch 16 because we are going to use it as reference and i will hide this component so it will not be in my way and then we will edit in place and make sure that assembly components are visible and maybe we should also hide this deflector so deflector one and we will select the protrusion one and select edit definition on the command bar we will select the sketch step which is the very first step and what we are going to do is to reposition the plane where the sketch for the protrusion is located instead of the endpoint on this side we will select the endpoint on the opposite side and as you can see we have a warning the profile will be placed onto the new plane but some relationships may be lost we are not going to worry about that and we select ok and as you can see the protrusion is opposition and the material is not on the correct side to fix that we are going to move to this extend step and keep in mind that the thickness was 15 so you select the extend step and we will re-enter 15 then make sure that we are on the correct side and finish now the protrusion is now fixed and on the tree we can see that the cutout ctrl q to have a better look the revolve cut failed and the red exclamation point in front of the feature is an indication of that so we will have a look inside the sketch to clearly understand what is the cause of the failure so normal tool and you can see that the, the profile is not longer as it should be we have to flip this back to the inside so that some material can be cut from the part to do that the easy way is to click on this dimension and add a minus to flip the side of the dimension and as you can see now the profile is corrected and now we can close the sketch and finish now as you can see our first part is okay now let's show the assembly components and everything is well in place now we'll move to the second ring make it visible first then we will double click and we will hide the first one okay let me collapse this also and again we will select the protrusion then edit definition and then select this first step and move the plane up to this endpoint accept the warning and 
you'll also have to change the side where the material is created so you select this extend step and re-enter 35 and on this side then finish now we can close and return to the assembly now you can see these two components follow the second ring as we expected and I'm going to go ahead and edit this one too and we select the revolve protrusion and edit profile normal tool and as you can see we'll have to bring this profile completely to the right side okay so we can do as we did before so we'll enter minus 27 and we'll do the same for this one too minus 30 uh, close sketch finish and as you can see the all fails to compute and this is only normal because the all was at 66 from this phase okay so we will edit the all feature but this time we will select this dynamic edit and you can see how the hole is positioned so nothing is cut this is why the whole feature fails so we're going to change this value to to minus 66 and there it is now we just click on the screen and as you can see the hole is now correctly computed now we go back again onto the assembly and, and we make sure that this last component is also on the correct side as it should be because now it is overlapping this one so we'll edit the revolve protrusion and come to the screen and again we will try as we did previously and as you can see it fails i don't know why but adding a minus in front of the dimension will not work all the times and what we can do to bypass this is to make this dimension driven by selecting this small lock and now you can see the sketch is no longer fully defined so you can select the line and bring it to this side then we'll make this driving again and we will enter 40 as it was before we we'll do the same for this one so select the line drag it inside and make it driving again change the value to 9 and there it is so we can close and finish and we will return to the assembly and have a look on the sheet metal components ok so we we'll select the sheet metal configuration and ok and maybe we should show everything now as you can see only one of these components is displayed and it is this one and the component 1920 probably failed as you can see okay so we are going to go back to the assembly and try to understand what is happening okay but first we are going to reposition these components because we define the sketches using reference planes we are going to have to reposition the reference plane so the first one will be this 121 so we'll select it and we select edit definition you see just at the time we hit edit definition we lose the original position of this plane but we know that it is 750 so we are going just to move on the right side and input minus 750 
then enter and we have a new position for this plane okay to edit the plane 20 i will show you a trick that will help you to keep the position of the plane so you select the plane and select this this kind a kind of feature tree for plane inside the assembly let's say like that you select the plane on this feature tree and then we will remove the minus and then enter as you can see the plane is now properly positioned and for this component to compute properly you have to move to this tool and update all links now we can have a look on this plane 19 you can see that it is correctly positioned already and what about the sketches no need to look 21 and 20 they are okay already so we will look at 19 you will move to the old tab and activate the pad configuration then you will make this sketch visible and have a close look as you can see the art that should be on the outside is now inside and we are going to zoom in until we can select or maybe box select and delete the arc then we will use the include tool and select the edge as we did before and uh, maybe stay zoom in because we are going to use the trim tool to trim this tiny portion again okay so this is what i was worrying about uh, this sketch is not very robust as you can see and this is a common problem with axe so i am not really surprised it happens quite a lot and i have experienced it with different software okay so now we will make metal components visible and we are going to dive inside this one edit in place and we can now make sure that we have the correct definition for this sketch okay the sketch is properly copied inside our component now we will go ahead and edit the lofted flange so you select the lofted flange and you will hit edit definition as you can see what is computed currently is this tiny arc we don't want that so we will move to this cross section step and and now we are front click on a creation method or select path or cross section to edit we want to edit this cross section so we will select the cross section now you want to remove this axe so we will press shift and remove it and you want to select the big arc as the cross section so we are going to go to the sketch step and select this arc and now we can right click and right click again to preview and as you can see the lofted flange is created but the material is not on the right side so we will go back to this side step and we make sure that the material will be created outside of the profile and finish now we can go back to the assembly and we will display all the components so we activate the default configuration and as you can see everything is now properly positioned now we can add our two additional components so they will be parts we are going to create them first and later edit them so just right click and i will enter f1 for flange first component so save then again 
another component right click to accept f2 and save okay now we select our first new components edit in place then control q to show assembly components and as we did before we are going to use the revolve tool and as usual our coincident plane then normal to the view and zoom fit now the first part of the flange is positioned flush to this face and is sitting right on this cylinder so we're going to make sure that we have the peers active and we're going to make sure also it is easily accessible for us so we don't have to switch between tabs so what we are going to do is to right click on the tool and select add to quick access toolbar so now we have it right there and then we will select the end point of one of these two lines doesn't matter and move vertically then horizontally we'll have seven millimeters click to position and then we make sure that we will select a point on this line and that the line will be a vertical line and we close okay now we'll add a symmetric diameter control q to hide assembly geometry origin element then this end point and we will input 700 87,5 then axis of revolution and close sketch 360 finish cancel and we jump to the next component revolve again Coincident plane, control Q, and normal tool. So extend, and we make sure that this component is visible. We make sure that we have peer edge locate active, and we select the intersection point of these two lines. So we highlight the first line then the second line and we move to the location of the intersection and as you can see the intersection indicator is displayed and then we click and now we will move and enter 90 then select and click to place the line then vertical line horizontal line until the, the vertical indicator is displayed then control Q to hide assembly components and click to finish the profile then symmetric diameter from the origin to this end point and the value will be 921 and now something is missing because the sketch is not fully defined Okay, so to fully define the sketch, we are going to make sure that we connect this endpoint to this one. And then close sketch. And as always, we will not forget to add the axis of revolution. And then close sketch. 360 degree. Then finish and cancel. Now we create the holes so use this face as the coincident plane normal to the sketch we change the diameter to 35 and make sure that the hole will be cut through all or through next we give the same result and we position the first hole somewhere like that okay since we have to create 36 all on a diameter of 857 we're going to create a new cycle 
with a diameter of 857 then enter and we will position the center coincident to the origin and then we will add a line from the origin to the center of our first hole and we make sure that we add a coincident constraint between the end point or the center of the hole and the cycle and to finish we will add an angle dimension between the x-axis and the line and since we have 36 holes we have 10 degrees between holes that means 5 between the x-axis and the first hole so 5 and then we close sketch directly so we don't need to make these two construction they will be automatically made construction and we will define the site from for the material to be removed from and create the hole then cancel next circular pattern we select the hole as we did before coincident place and make sure that we are using the circular pattern tool so we select the origin or the center point of any of this cycle and the center point of the hole to define the pattern then make sure that we have 36 instance to be created and we click to create the pattern and click to exit pattern edit and then close sketch and the holes are created and we are done with this part so we can just close and return to the assembly and make sure that these two components are in the default display configuration so we will save since the flanges on the inlet and in the outlet are similar we are going to reuse these two components and there is two ways to do that the first way is to use the part library in the parts library you can access components inside your working directory or you can choose an existing directory anywhere on your drive so I am in my working directory and I am going to look for the components I want to copy so the first one is this component and I will select it and drag it and drop it inside the assembly now you can see a new component is added now we can define the relationships to, to position the components inside our assembly you can use this button to display or to hide geometry so it cancel and this tool allows you to select different types of constraint or relationship you can use we are going to keep the flash fit now we are going to zoom in and make sure that we select a cylindrical face so cylinder we also select this cylinder and as you can see the two cylindrical face will become coaxial now we select this planar face and this one too and they will become coplanar so the tool is very flexible you can use it to create several types of relationships between components and now we just press escape and we are done for this component the second way to reuse a component especially if a component is already existing in the assembly is to use the steering wheel to copy the component so you select the component and on this command bar you make sure that you activate the copy option and using the the primary axis of the steering wheel just move the components up to the position you want it to be and then click to place it as you can see now we have a second instance of the second flange and what we are going to do next is to make sure that the component is in the right position so 
we select the component and edit definition and as you can see we have this command bar again we are going to keep the flash fit and we select the inner diameter and the cylinder then we make sure we select this face and this face okay now we make sure that we save the this configuration and we switch to the path configuration also and we'll add these four components we we'll make them visible and we will save the configuration and this we conclude part 10 of this tutorial